Burn. Hey everybody, Hikaias here, and welcome to another Universal Yums Yum Yum Box unboxing. So these boxes come with snacks from different countries all over the world. Very exciting. Get to try new things, get to learn new things, because these, uh, these boxes always come with little booklets and little flyers that give us lots of cool information so i'm excited to dig into this one for the month of june so let's check it out so this is home of the cotton top tamarind and for the first time since i started doing this i have no idea what that is so let's open this up and check it out colombia south america that's exciting so i got lots to learn here let's see we've got there are only 6,000 wild cotton top tamarinds on earth and they all live in Colombia. So that is a cotton top tamarind. Cool. So there's the Pacific ocean. So, Oh, see, I'm learning where Colombia even is. I'm, I was always terrible at geography and that, that hasn't changed. So let's check this out. We got Cartagena, the seaside castle once protected Colombian silver from real life pirates of the Caribbean, which were not nearly as charming as Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow or Orlando Bloom's, uh, Will Turner. The Amazon's poison dart frogs weigh less than a penny. Oh my, and it's right next to Venezuela there. Uh, Medel Medellin? I don't know, I'm probably gonna mangle all of these names too. Uh, the birthplace of Colombia's most famous painter, Fernanda Botero, and of the savory plantain chips. Ooh, in my box. That's exciting. Bogota. The, in this capital city, you'll find the largest exhibition of gold artifacts in the world. Oh, that's fun. Who doesn't love some gold? Uh, and then we got Santander de Quilichau. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, where the Bon Bon Bum is made, okay? Ipiels. The name of this cathedral means stone slab sanctuary. It stands in the middle of a canyon, okay? So we're getting literal. The Amazon rainforest, the largest rainforest in the world with over 390 billion trees. It's over 9,000. And then you got Brazil and Peru. And then we got this stuff on the back. We got this game, Cinco Huecos. You need a box and five coins to play that. And we're not gonna do that right now, but we could. You could do it if you got a Universal Yums box. All right, so what do we got here? Got our booklet that I will read in between this segment and the taste test segment. We got some garlic plantain chips, Turbana garlic plantain chips. That's a new one. La Nina, Papas con sabor limon. Lemon flavored potato chips, that should be interesting. I'm gonna bet, I'm not gonna like that, but we'll try it anyway. We got arepa, queso, mantequilla, cheese and butter flavored. Uh, I guess these are chips or crackers of some sort. Galletas, madaritas. Con dolces, trocitos de platano. Sabor de otro mundo. Taste of another world. So we got some galactic monkey snacks. We got another yum bag, which we will explore more during the taste test portion, as per usual. Risada's mayonnaise flavored chips, which I am even more sure I'm not going to like, but you'll get to watch me eat that. We got some bacon chips. Tocineta. Lemon flavored, lemon flavored bacon chips. So not just bacon chips. Trululu chocolates. You touch my trululu. I don't know. It seemed like a thing. A Bianchi bar. Carmelo plus money. And uh, since I don't speak Spanish or Whatever, is it? It's Spanish or Portuguese. I can never remember which they speak in Colombia. I think it's Spanish. But since I don't speak it, whichever one it is, uh, we will definitely get translations of these as we go through the taste test. We got Trululu 
Chocolores. I don't, is that the same as the other Trululu? I don't know. I don't know what I did with it. Trululu. Fresitas. These look like some like berry gummies, which sounds very tasty. Dolce's Sartidos X. Dolce con leche, traditional variedades. Six unidades con café, con coco natural, con naranja, con panela, dolce de fruta guayaba. So we got a bunch of different flavors of candies. Six different flavors to be exact. And then we've got Mancoco Bridge or Makoko. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to pronounce the trees as an N or something else from Colombina. Two cookies. All right, and that's what's in the box. So, uh, uh, momentarily, we will begin the taste test portion of this month's box, and uh, we'll get right to it. Uh, until then, you know, uh, talk amongst yourselves. All right, and we're back. Uh, I just clopped right next to the microphone. That was probably bad. So a couple things. Uh, I am currently recording in the middle of a thunderstorm, which is probably a terrible decision. So if you hear any thunder or loud noises, that's what that is. Second of all, any and all attempts uh, prior to this and also now to pronounce these words um, really in any of these languages, but um, especially this week, because I feel like when I try to pronounce Spanish words, I, it maybe sounds like I'm making fun of them and I'm not. I'm really just trying to pronounce the words i just may be terrible at it uh and i do apologize if that is the case or if it sounds like i'm mocking it i promise it's an earnest attempt to actually pronounce the words that are on the the, the page uh so what you see behind me this thumb uh this is a famous colombian landmark el piñón de cotape it's a rock that weighs over 10 million tons. It's over 656 feet tall. It's in the middle of a flat valley. Here's the image that they use in the guidebook so you can get kind of a better idea of what the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What the, the flat valley around it looks like. Uh, it was once worshipped by the indigenous people. Uh, the first time it was climbed, it took five days. A German scientist discovered a new plant species on its summit. Uh, and so given the rock's notoriety, the two neighboring towns of Guatape and El Peñol used to fight over it. And the uh, Guatape, Guatape uh, townspeople tried to paint their name on it, but the El Peñol townspeople stopped them. So there's just a big GU on the western side that you can still see to this day, which I think is hilarious uh, and that's basically all this book says about el guatape el pinon de guatape because uh, that's all pretty interesting i thought all right so let's go ahead and get to the uh taste testing portion of today's thing let me just go ahead and remove the green screen filter so that you can see the things as I pull them out. All right, so first up, I should have probably tried to organize this a little bit, huh? Uh, we have Turbana Garlic Plantain Chips. What did I underline for this one? So uh, I learned this, maybe this is this will be news to you. Um, there's, there's a lot of differences between bananas and plantains. Uh, or plantains. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, um, but I always I usually hear it plantain, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Uh, for, so bananas grow to be six to eight inches long and have a thin peel, while plantains grow twice that size and have a peel so thick you need a knife to remove it. Um, bananas can be eaten raw, and plantains must be cooked. They're far too bitter to be eaten uncooked. And uh, so they're also sometimes called cooking bananas. Um, and plantain's mild flavor allows it to be used in both sweet and savory dishes, which is why garlic plantain chips. So you wouldn't have garlic banana chips, but you can have garlic plantain chips. So here's what this looks like. This looks like a banana chip. So it's got 
the texture of a banana chip. Not one of those that's been like lacquered in sugar. But like if you just try it. And it, you can just taste like, mmm, that's almost banana. And there's some garlic on it. And it's actually really good. So they weren't kidding. Garlic, garlic plantain chips are actually tasty. All right, so next up we have the Bianchi Bar. Bianchi Bar with Carmelo and Mani. The world's finest chocolate comes from Belgium, Italy, and Colombia. Um, the cacao plant is native to Colombia, meaning the locals have been enjoying chocolate for centuries. Uh, they primarily prefer hot chocolate, which I wouldn't have expected from... A South American country. I expect it to be hot there a lot. Uh, and it's traditionally served with cheese for dunking. So, and there, uh, most of their chocolate is de de defined as fine of superior quality and flavor by the International Cacao Organization, which I didn't even know existed. So you open this up and it looks like, it looks like a chocolate bar. And it tastes like a particularly good chocolate bar. All right. One second, this is, this is really chewy. All right, so next up we have Rosatus Mayonesis. Mayonesis. Um, so apparently Colombians use a lot of mayonnaise. Uh, they like to mix it with ketchup to make their iconic salsa rosada, pink sauce. Or they add in handfuls of chopped garlic to make salsa de ajo, garlic sauce. And, uh, so then they've got mayonnaise potato chips, because they're just like, mm, we love mayonnaise. And of course, it looks like a potato chip. You can't see her right now, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that Callie is very interested in the mayonnaise potato chips. I opened this bag and she came running over here. Hmm, I can't actually taste the mayonnaise at all. I don't know if that's just me or what. If I can get Callie, come up here. Come on, come up, yep. Come on, gotta come closer. Oh, you're so close. Come on. There she is. Okay. Callie gets a, a mayonnaise chip. So those are, I mean, they taste like potato chips. That's pretty good. Good girl, Callie. Good girl. All right. Next up. Trulalu Chocolates. Chocolates. I really gotta figure out a better light, lighting setup for doing this so that you can see what the heck I'm doing. All right, so um, this is chocolate coated gummy candy um, and they, they serve it uh, primarily at quincenara, quincenara parties. So for Colombians, a girl's 15th birthday is a big deal. It marks her transition into adulthood and it's celebrated with a fiesta de quince años. Commonly known at or años, commonly known as quinceañera. So this is this is a chocolate coated gummy. So it looks kind of like Easter candy. This one's pink, so the lighting is really not going to do it any favors. I'm trying to figure out how to shadow it properly. There we go. Um. That's an interesting flavor. Not convinced I'm a fan, but I've certainly had worse things. The gummy is the cho I don't like chocolate and fruit mixed together usually. Let me try a couple more. Or I may just give them to my mom because I think she'd really like them. All right, so next up. Yes, Callie, I see you, but you can't have this. She's She's right here. 
She's very excited about taste testing. She usually doesn't get to sit up here while I'm doing the taste testing part of this. So this is very exciting for her. Max Coco, not not Man Coco, not Ma Coco, Max Coco. Here, I'll just hold it like this. And um, so you think coconuts, you probably think the tropics, but coconuts aren't native to those places. Scientists have actually traced their origins uh, to the other side of the world. They believe the Spanish brought an Asian coconut strain to the Pacific coast of South America, and the Portuguese brought an Indian coconut strain to the Caribbean. So which one grows in Colombia? Both. So this bar is a blend of both of Colombia's coconut species, and then it's slathered on four crispy, lightly chocolatey layers of wafer with its far-reaching roots and incredible flavor. This is one truly universal yum. All right, so we got two wafer bars, and it looks... I, I don't know if I'll be able to show this to you properly. Dripping wafer crumbs everywhere. It looks like a really long wafer cookie like you used to have in preschool that I sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, I still buy at the grocery store because I, I still love wafer cookies. I taste like one too. The coconut. Tastes like a coconut wafer cookie. Which is a good thing for it to taste like. It's pretty good. If you like coconut. And I do. Let's see. Next up. Tochinara. Tochinera Limon. So, Colombia's national food, Bandeja Pasta, Paisa, features a generous portion of fried pork belly called Chicharron. Alongside rice, beans, ground beef, chorizo, plantains, cornbread, avocado, fried egg, and a lot of lime. So, um, this has always been voted the top yum. This is the third time Universal Yums has gone to Colombia. And it's been in the box all three times because it's always voted the best one in there. So, this has a lot to live up to. And it looks like a bacon... Like they dyed a pork rind to be bacon striped. And that's, that is, um, hmm, is an interesting flavor. I, I think I like it. That is some very strong, uh, lime flavor. Um, it's actually lime flavored bacon chips not lemon flavored but i think it works it's pretty good um so this is galetas medoritas is next you may remember this package didn't know what it was these are plantain cookies so um they're just they just use plantains in everything apparently i have it for for lunch dinner breakfast dessert all of the above so it's just like a little miniature cookie. And it tastes like a banana graham cracker. That's pretty good. All right, so we got, next up is toasted arepa. Arepa inspired corn tortilla chips with cheese and butter flavor. So, arepas are not tortilla chips. They are thin rounds made from ground corn and then grilled, baked, fried, or steamed. They're kind of like Colombian cornbread. They have. A, they also have a place in nearly every Colombian meal. Uh, the, and they, Barranquilla hosts hugely popular arepa festivals every year. Arepas in rural regions are strung on necklaces and presented to esteemed community members as medals of honor. That's pretty cool. So this is cheese and cheese and butter flavored arepas chips. And it does it does look like a corn chip, but it's not. It's an arepas chip. Or arepa chip. Arepa. 
That's pretty good. Just, just enough flavor. Does not overpower the 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 arepa. All right, so we got. What do we got next? La Nina Papitas Limon. Now this says it's a lemon flavored potato chip, but that's apparently actually a translation error. These are lime flavored potato chips. And the confusion comes down to language. In many Spanish speaking countries, Lima means lime and Limon means lemon. In Colombia, however, Limon means both lemon and lime because um, limes grow in Colombia Lemons thrive in more moderate climates, so they don't have a lot of lemons in Colombia. So they're just like, eh, it's the same thing, apparently, because they're so rare. Delicioso is apparently Spanish for delicious. <laughs> and again... This looks exactly like you'd expect it to look. It looks like a potato chip. And it tastes like lime. Which is surprisingly good. Here you go. Cali also approves. Trudeloo gomitas frasitas. Flying to Colombia, and one of the first things you'll try is this candy, kind of. Colombia's most famous dessert, called fresa con crema, is famously served at roadside stalls surrounding major airports, making it the first taste of Colombia for many visitors. Made with a berrylicious blend of creme fraiche, sweetened condensed milk, and farm fresh strawberries, fresas con crema isn't just a great post-flight snack, it's also the inspiration behind this snack. Excuse me. Colombians have an intense love of strawberries and uh, they also go crazy for a meringue and fresa which is a mix of juicy strawberries, whipped cream and crispy meringue and salpicón de frutas a sweet cocktail of sparkling soda and diced strawberries with vanilla ice cream that sounds amazing, I should make that for myself so these are basically strawberry <coughs> excuse me strawberry cream gummies and uh, let's see if I can shadow this enough so you can see that there's some strawberry and there's some cream coloring here um they're squishier than than I would have imagined just looking at them mm. it really does taste like strawberries and cream oh that's good All right, so next up we have the Caja de Dolces Sortidos. And there's six different candies in here. I'm not going to try all of these right now. Excuse me. Let's see if I can get into this box. But we've got six different flavors. We have milk, caramel, coffee, guava, penela, Transport sugar more sweetly, more easily, excuse me, Colombians created panela, or solid blocks of unrefined cane sugar. It's a flavor that's slightly sweeter than brown sugar. Wow, and then there's an orange flavor and a coconut flavor. So, let's see, I'm going to try the panela, because that's the one I think I've never tried before. And I think this is the panela flavored. Some of these are kind of similar looking. Does it say on here anywhere? They have a Facebook and an Instagram. Oh well, let's just dig in. If I can open it. There we go. Oh yeah, this smells like brown sugar. It's got to be the panela. Mm -mm. This is a coffee flavored one. Still, 
it's good and it's um it's not nearly as chewy as i expected i expected it to be very chewy it looks kind of like a turkish delight from a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago i should say so i expected it to be chewier but um oh man just some good coffee flavor all right and finally assuming i don't dump everything everywhere we have the yum yum bag we have passion fruit bon bon boom It looks like Bon Bon Boom, or Bon Bon Bum. I don't, you're not really gonna be able to read that. Uh, if I hold it really close, Bon Bon Boom, but it's pronounced Bon Bon Boom. So actually when they export this to America, they change that B-U-M to a B-O-O-M so that people don't get confused. So that's fun. And uh, the boom apparently refers to this is a passion fruit lollipop with a bubblegum center. So this is a it's a yellow and orange lollipop, and it looks like there's seeds in here or maybe candy that's designed to look like seeds. Not gonna eat the whole thing now, but yeah, that is some serious passion fruit look, passion fruit flavor. It's pretty good. All right, and we've got Super Coco Tirudito. So there was a company in, in Colombia in 1948 in the city of Manizales. Back then, the company was called Superman, and it consisted of just eight people making chewy gum and coconut candies. Um, so lots changed. Their company is up to 1,600 employees. Their name is just Super now, and now they also make gummies, mints, and chocolates. But um, this is one of the original candies that they made. They make 24 million of these a month using over 300,000 coconuts just to keep up with the local demand. Um, it looks kind of like a, a toffee. Hold it really close to the camera. Maybe you can see better. Uh, maybe uh, it kind of looks like a pretzel on the camera, but it looks more like a, a, a toffee or like a, a, what's the word? Oh, those chocolate candies. Tootsie Rolls. It looks kind of like a, a lighter Tootsie Roll. I just got that Tootsie Roll chewing us. What a really good coconut flavor. Mmm. Delicious. And then we have Supers. Cafe, Cafe Gourmet. Maybe I figured out a better plan for using the lighting. Get underneath the lighting by putting it right up next to the camera. Only took me three episodes of this to figure that out. Good job, me. With over 560,000 coffee farms, Colombia is the world's largest exporter of Arabica coffee. Arabica? And the third largest exporter of all coffee varieties. And that doesn't include all the coffee they keep. Uh, they've been they they drink it morning and night, adults and children. For a rich cup, Colombians will ask for coffee from the northern region of Santander. But if they want something a bit more acidic and sweet, they'll order a roast from the southern regions like Nariño and Huila, where high altitudes give the beans a flavor boost coffee candy this is a this is a coffee chew again it looks kind of like i should hold up with my left hand so i can still use the microphone it looks like a tootsie roll kind of texture mm. and it has that texture and very nice coffee flavor Maybe the best coffee flavor I've ever had that isn't coffee. And that's it. That's all the food. That's Columbia Snacks. So a lot of weird looking stuff. But um, it's all pretty good. And the only thing I wasn't so sure about 
was the Chocolores. Chocolate Blanco. The gummy covered chocolates. Because those two flavors I just don't think go very well together. But that's just my personal opinion. Maybe you'll have a different opinion. So if you started getting these boxes, do let me know in the comments below uh, if you're enjoying them. I'm certainly enjoying them. I'm having a blast learning so much about other countries. I've learned a ton, especially about Colombia and Israel, because I've never done any kind of thinking or research about them so far. Um, and all these different foods to try. Oh, it's so much fun. Just seeing what all is out there and what people have thought of that I never could have imagined just staying here in America. But uh, I think that's all I've got for you today. Uh, so until next time, I hope you have a beautiful day and may all of your paths be paved with hexagonal stones. And this is the part where I do a quick shout out to all of my beautiful patrons. Go to my Patreon linked in the description below and sign up for as little as $1 a month to join them in helping me make more videos like this.